Let's review Hanover's definition of blended learning to focus our attention. Hanover County Public Schools defines blended learning as a combination of online and face-to-face -face instruction that gives students some control over path, place, and pace. So let's ponder for a moment. Does showing whole group videos provide students some control over path, place, or pace? Really think about why you show whole group videos. Now, prior to Chromebooks arriving, oftentimes we had to do it out of necessity because of our limited access to technology. Kids didn't have that consistent access. Maybe we were even limited on time. Now, we all know how valuable videos can be. Now we're one-to-one. -one. With devices in the rooms at all times, now we can ask ourselves, is showing a video whole group really the best way? Is your reasoning grounded in research and best practice? Or is it just something you do because it's the way it's always been done or because it's easy? You must ask yourself, am I able to gauge student learning when showing whole group videos? Now, interactive videos is just one way to transform learning and give students opportunities that they haven't had before in our classes. John Hattie did some pretty eye-opening research on the effects of teacher interventions on student achievement. Basically, we do all sorts of things all day long in an attempt to impact student learning. John Hattie's research put a number on it to show just how much of an impact teacher interventions have. And if for any particular intervention to be considered worthwhile, it needs to show an improvement in student learning of at least an average gain. That is an effect size of 0. 0.40. He calls this the hinge point. It's what basically determines what is and isn't effective. And the use of interactive videos gets a whopping 0. 0.54 effect size. Now let's take a look at this graph. This shows the amount of a video watched versus the length of the video. And as you can see, if a video is anywhere between zero and three minutes long, then usually 100% of the video is watched. Same with videos that are three to six minutes. About 100% of the video is watched. But notice when you get to the six to nine minute range, it goes down just a smidge. Not significant, but a smidge. And then we see if a video is in the 9 to 12 minute range or even the 12 to 40 minute range, videos do not get watched. Now, as you look for videos to support your content, look for videos in that zero to six minute time range. Remember student engagement. When designing your lessons, consider changing up what you have students do every 10 minutes or so to keep kids engaged. And think about breaking up your videos into more manageable chunks. Have them watch a short segment, then do something with that content. Then they can go back to watching another short segment. Don't make them sit through really long videos without engaging their brains.